This is so generational change in so many ways, and you'll see by the reactions of the people that are there to get a better idea of exactly why things are where they are and why this has become, you know, obviously the, the issue in Gaza is an issue that is definitely being pushed much harder by the younger generations. But you'll see the reaction of the people that are there, and it really speaks to the disconnect that we have right now. It's really bad. Yeah. So we'll start with Kirsten Gillibrand. Gillibrand, how can you say that you represent New Yorkers when 70% of this country demands a ceasefire in Gaza, when 45% of New Yorkers demand a ceasefire, when 53% of New Yorkers do not want to send Israeli funding or military aid anymore? Gillibrand, you received $366,000 from pro-Israel lobbies in this past election cycle. Why are you allowing your interests to be bought by foreign government? We have, we're sending billions of our tax Stop. Stop. dollars to kill children and women. 30,000 people have been Stop. Stop. I like my genocide the way it is. Please stop complaining. Imagine stroking out at that <laughs> level. And you could see uh, that he's clearly not a healthy guy. And his wife is there basically trying to tell him, st- you know, don't do it. Don't do it. And at the end of the day, what are they reacting to? They're you so are uh, you are upsetting my time with my senator, who I probably have given money to, and it, it, it's important to me. It's important for my. I place don't want to hear society. that unpleasantness. Your unpleasantness I is contaminating yeah. our little get together. Could you imagine if somebody had interrupted a Wasserman Schultz event at one of the well, Broward DEC? See, events the thing is, and that's the thing. Like see, that? Debbie, you will never see her in a position like this. You will not ever see, none of these videos will come out with Debbie in it. You will never find it because she does not ever put herself in a position where regular people could be present. So this this would never happen to Debbie. I think that there is some truth to what mm-hmm. Zenith is saying, which is, yeah, there's probably some of them that know that that's what's really going on. They know it's a genocide. They don't want to say it because the truth is, is that they're willing to accept it if it means that that's what it's going to take for the Democrats to beat the Republicans. Like, that's the mindset. The mindset is, yeah, it sucks. And you think, and that's even you think like with Alex. I think some of the people are like that. Yeah, I think that they just believe in their mind. It's like, well, it really does suck. But you know what? If the red team was in charge, the same thing would be going on. And we're just going to have to suck it up. But the thing that happened with Alex, I found very interesting. We'll get to that. that. Okay. So here we go. You have the money to correct these historic wrongs. If you took the money that you had given to Israel, the $15 billion you gave to Israel of our taxpayer money. You are lying to the people, saying there is a peace process when Israel is the one that has been consistently declining a ceasefire. 25 year old Aaron Bushnell gave up his life, immolating his last words for free palace. There's the image. There it is. You have this woman. You have two things. You have a few things going on here. The first you have, and this gentleman who stood up with the cane, I can almost assure you served in World War II. He's got the Navy hat on. He looks the age. He looks like he's in his late 80s, early 90s. He's got the whole thing. Why don't you talk This is a true generational thing. But this is what our DEC meetings look like here. Oh, it's geriatric. This is our our Democratic Club meetings. It's the average age. The Republican meetings are nothing like this. The Republican meetings are Nothing like that. Now, are there old people, the GOP? Absolutely. But... These Democrat meetings, especially today, this is all that it is. And they don't want to hear anything that is not exactly what they want to hear. And could you have picked a more perfect image? It's perfect. Than the two 70-year-old senior citizens sitting there, closing their ears. And security grabbing her. Taking her out. Right. When she's very nicely wearing a mask, mind you, I think, politely wearing a mask. And she's, she's actually saying truthful things. They're not listening. And then this guy, this guy who's pulling her out of there, who knows what he really thinks? Who he, knows if he even really wants to? He doesn't want to. Exactly. He might just, he's just working for whoever's telling him to do that. For all we know, he's just another person that's screwed like she is. Like it's, it's, this is, it is. It's but what it should really also tell, shot. and what it should also tell you, and granted, Kirsten Gillibrand was basically bequeathed this Senate seat from Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So who is she representing? And I'm willing to bet that this particular location is probably somewhere in like, you know, Westchester or Rockland County, New York. These are probably fairly comfortable senior aged individuals. 
And they don't care. No. At all. No. Well, and the other thing is they believe whatever news they're watching. So if they're watching MSNBC repeatedly or whatever it is they're watching, they actually believe that that's news. And so to them, they're only hearing whatever side they're hearing and they don't want to hear the other side. They don't want to hear it. Even if they know it exists, they don't want to hear it. This really is. This is like the perfect image. Like if you wanted the meme of the old guard of the corporate yeah. Democratic Party, this is it. Screaming for change, desperately needs it. Old guy telling her to shut the F up. I'm going to hit you with my cane. And they have Two their others closing. That is such a liberal thing to and do. In an all white meeting, you have the one black man who's working there to pull out the person that's speaking up. The closing of the like, inch, I mean, honestly, crazy. think about it. That is if that's not no, neoliberalism at the highest level when it comes yeah. to complete disregard for actual circumstance, not pomp and circumstance, but actual circumstance. Oh, metal, this get off the mask thing. I understand, you don't like the mask. In all reality, she's being respectful to the people that are in this room because right. she's yelling over them and it's containing whatever's coming out of her mouth from going over all these old, potentially yeah. vulnerable people. So I understand what you're saying, but people standing up, I and I've said it repeatedly, people like Senator Gillibrand, these people should not have a moment of peace not a moment of peace from when they leave their hat from anytime they're in a public arena, they should not have a moment's peace because if you are not doing what most people want, then this is what you should have to deal with. And this is the one thing, believe it or not, above everything else, this is the one thing they don't want to deal with. No. They don't want to deal with regular people because they can't look themselves in the mirror. They know. They know this. I can't even imagine how Debbie would react if she was if she was in a place she, where she couldn't leave, oh, where she was trapped and she, she had to deal with well, this. Well, then you'd really see. Then you'd we've really seen it. see. Yeah, we've seen it. But guys, then there's really, endless amounts of footage. Why don't you go back and look at the video clip of when she lost her mind with Medea Benjamin? Oh, yeah, in that press conference. Let go of me! Yeah, no, and then she is. proceeded to call the police Yeah, they sent she That's what the ends up happening. Because for them, they didn't. Oh si God. They signed up for the life. They didn't sign up for the job. Well, no, they didn't That's sign up for difference. public service. They That's just want. The they just like the cushy job. But these, it's so telling. But the thing that I do take some comfort in is when we look at these types of images, and when we go to meetings here, the majority of these people are on their way out, and that's the kind of thing about people like Debbie, um, people that appeal to a very older generation, they're not getting any new voters. And every year their voters are dying off and they don't get new ones. And I don't know how so long that's, you can just hang So that's on the thing, right. That so this is your appeal. You're appealing to this group. In 10 years, you'll have no audience. And that's not to suggest that, these se that there are seniors. There's a significant portion of seniors that do care, but the seniors, for whatever reason, that, that are ardent supporters of the current structure of the Democratic Party, they are showing you how much they care. They don't. No, but again, they really are on their way out. Now, in South Florida here, we obviously also have very older populations, so we definitely see more of that demographic. And seriously, from one Democratic meeting to the next, people die. Like, I, I'm serious. I know that sounds horrible. Like, when you go into a Dem Club meeting here, you see more walkers in wheelchairs than you see people. So... You know, their their time is very limited. These leaders, leaders, these representative, they're not even my so-called representative. They're very limited. Nobody's registering to vote and coming out saying, yes, I'm 18. I'm going to vote for Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Nobody's doing that. So let's continue. All right. And you, this, you, this is what you do to political society. Why family members are being murdered. Let us speak. Last week, three more of my family members have been murdered. I love it. Ooh. Pulling out the big words. So they're going to make it what they're doing. So so have has has Israel actually offered a ceasefire resolution? Yes. Have you read what the ceasefire resolution actually says? It's like says? we're going to stop shooting you to let our people go so that we can start shooting you again. Do you know what <laughs> do you know what's taking place right now as we speak? 
in Englewood, New Jersey, which is what I consider an attached part of New York City. But Englewood, New Jersey is just a across from the George Washington Bridge in North Jersey. Do you know what they're doing there? Englewood, New Jersey is one of those affluent enclaves that not a lot of people know about that has a substantial Zionist Jewish population. And you know what's going on right now? They are doing land auction deals for Gaza. And they're giving it to them. They're letting them buy it. Isn't that nice? And you thought that this had anything to do with protecting Israelis from Hamas? You thought that's what this was about? Was there anybody who really thought that? Well, yeah, the people that are already on board and believe them. Again, they're speaking to a very small echo chamber of people. They're not getting new people. So that's the difference. Our team is getting new people every single day. Their team has people dying off every single day. So eventually, they're not going to be with us any longer. And we all have to look forward to that day. Um, but yeah, this, that this is, is That is correct. <laughs> yes, the guy was from Teaneck. He is Jewish. And he went to this uh, this auction, if you will. It's taking place. Oh, he was great. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Um, this is stuff that they what will inevitably be happening. And we're seeing it already with some of the people that are in Congress. They're not having their events. They're cutting things short. They're not saying everything they want to say. There was something the other day where, where um, I don't even remember who it was, but he just cut his speech completely short because they didn't want to deal with it anymore. So it's getting to them. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is getting to them. And we're seeing people's true color. I want to show the one in the hallway let's with that let's lunatic. Finish. Let's finish. Every single morning I wake up and I see Palestinians dying day after day after day after day, body after body after body, with our taxpayer dollars funding it. That's where they live. How many Palestinian children need to be killed before you call for a ceasefire? You have blood on your hands. My people deserve to live. These things are going to keep them from, and good. They're all going to basically be going into hiding. And let me special shout out to that whole team outside of Blinken's house. And I forget the name of the woman. She's coordinating that. And she has also coordinated um, basically the sit-in at the Israeli embassy in D.C., where they're making sure that they never take down the flags because as soon as they leave, they'll take it all down. So this woman, I cannot remember her name. I'd love to get her on the show, um, has coordinated the basic tent city that's camped outside of Anthony Blinken's house, yeah. which I love it. So this is the truth. My people deserve to live. But here's the thing. You can't murder over 13,000 children and think that you're ever. And this is the number that we're aware of. You know, we're friendly with Sean Fitzgerald from the actual Justice Warrior. And he, unfortunately, whether it's because he's in New York City, whatever his excuses are, says that it's not a genocide. Sean, if you see this, it is a genocide. Yeah, and, I can and, I, and I can prove it. Uh, you have over a million Palestinians that are now suffering from famine-related diseases, which means that over a period of time, tens of thousands will die, maybe hundreds of thousands will die. That's a genocide. And I could give a flying fuck who your audience is or who you try to appeal to. I'm not going to let it stand. No one should let it stand. Just call it what it is. Just be completely transparent about it. Because this is where you really find out if you have any principles or not. And unfortunately, the world we live in today, principles are lost, and you wouldn't expect anything from Senator Gillibrand. It, this has been her MO since she's been in the U.S. Senate. She tried to be the most overwoke person running for president back in 2020. She will go wherever she thinks she needs to go to help herself politically. Get if she thinks that she can withstand the heat in New York, which again, it is New York, where the biggest Jewish population in the country resides by far, that maybe she just thinks that this is the way to go. Okay. But eventually, it will come back to get you. This is going to have reverberating effects for generations to come. Generations. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.